That little bitty fella had the canary going, didn't he? <laughs> Whoo, man, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Rick, you're going to have to work on me. I know a lot of y'all are going to understand what I'm talking about this morning because a lot of you are the type of people that you, you're, you're doing it. Any of y'all got a garden at your house? Any of y'all got a garden? So all of you are overachievers that's out there that's got your gardens at your house. And, uh, and uh, you know, I thought about that, you know, because y'all know those saying, boy, that's, that's buying ripe, isn't it? So, you know, a lot of times we think about something being vine ripe and we think about tomatoes is the first thing we think about is those, those tomatoes up there and, and everybody's talking about that. We want those tomatoes. We want our first fruits of our first vine ripe that, that comes and everybody starts talking about them of how good they are. It was a lady that was in here just the other day said that there was a, a guy that, that came and got some of their land and she said, you know, we want to plant planted, one of you can raise your hand if it was you that was telling me about this, but she said that, that the guy came to her house and said, you know, I want to I wanna plant some tomato plants that you're on your daddy's old farm place where he used to run his patch and everything, and she said, all right, well, just go ahead and do that, and they said that she planted, I'm thinking she told me 1,600 plants out there. And I'm, I'm thinking, man, I would like to just go see that and I, and I would love to see them whenever they get right because 1,600, how many of y'all use still watermelons out in people's patch whenever you was kids? See, y'all wanting to lie in church, but I, I am so glad. Mike, you, your daddy, he used to write me letters whenever I would steal his, his uh, uh, watermelons out in his patch. He would write a letter and he'd say, Steve, only one a day or something like that because I would sit there and, and I guess that's the reason I can't eat too many watermelons today but, but they were vine ripe and they were so good and they had such a good taste to them. You know, a lot of people, they don't like watermelons or they don't like uh, things like that, you know, so a lot of people, they like cantaloupes. My wife loves cucumbers and squash and great. All this stuff that I'm talking about is making me starve to death. Any of y'all like that? Y'all probably think, well, you can make it a couple of days if you wanted to, but, uh, but I'm going to tell you what those vine ripe mean. It means that they're fully developed. Not only are they fully developed, we would look at them and we would say that those were pristine. They are, they are ready for picking. You know, Jesus, he was talking about that because all those, the produce that we see that's on those vines, they're, all, they're ripe until you pick them. And you know something, they're alive until you pick them. And whenever you go out there and you pick that tomato and you, and you pull it off that vine, right then that vine and that, that vine is separated from that produce of that tomato. And I'm going to tell you what's happening. It started dying right then. And Jesus talked and he told about that. He said, listen, you better make sure in John chapter 15, and starting verse 1, Jesus, he was talking about this and he was telling all of his disciples. And you know, the good thing that I liked about Jesus whenever he was teaching, not only was he talking to just his disciples, there was people that was coming and swarming in on him wanting to hear and just get a little voice of Jesus about what he was teaching. And listen to what he said in, in this. He said, I am the vine and my father is the, is the vine dresser. And he said, every vine that's in me that beareth not fruit is taken away. I, I had to ask Carrie to make sure what she called this, because when we first got married, we were just like a lot of you overachievers. We wanted to, we wanted to really do something good with ourselves. So we got out there and we, we planted some tomatoes and planted things in the garden and all that. And, and I, would, I would go out there. I, re, I wasn't really good at working in the garden because I'm a little, got a little lazy streak right down my back. It feels like whenever it comes to stuff like that. But she would go out there and she would work in that garden all the time. And I would watch her whenever she was doing that and she would, you know, and I would see her and she'd start picking at stuff like this. And, I, and I'd just watch her and I was thinking, what is she doing? Because on Leave It to Beaver, Beaver always was picking, picking at junk on Leave It to Beaver. Some of y'all have no clue what I'm talking about. But uh, the rest of y'all old people know exactly what I'm talking about. So, so she was out there and she would pull something out and she would throw it down and she would reach over here and she'd pull something down and, I, and pull it away. And, the, and you know something? every one of those leaves and stuff they look good and I was thinking you know 
what, what are you doing, Carrie? Why are you, why are you pulling that? That's got to be a reason that, that that leaf is on there. And this is what she told me. She said, these leaves are out here. And she'd show it to me and she'd pull it off. And she'd say, this is sucker leaves. And what this sucker leaves is, am I right about that? Or is she, see, she could tell me something. And I wouldn't know if she was telling the truth or not. It wasn't like I was going to research it. But she would say these are sucker leaves and she'd get rid of them because she would say that it was taking all the nutrients and everything from everything. And I never thought about that again until the Lord told me to preach this message. And whenever the Lord tells you to preach a message, you're trying to find out what, what is God wanting you to say in the message and why in the world would you remember back to that point that you'd have sucker leaves that you was thinking about. And let me share something with you. There's people that goes into churches, not just here, but many places that they may look at their life and say, I'm kind of a sucker leaf. You know, I'm kind of, I kind of get attached to the vine whenever I'm, I'm at church, but you know, as soon as, as, soon as I leave church, I'm, I'm not attached to that vine no more. I don't want no part of that. And you know something, I'm all in with the religion. I love all the music and I love the, the worship and the praise of the Lord. But you know something, it gets to a point in my life that, that I'm thinking, all right, God, I just want you to kind of just put me over to the side and, and the next good event comes up, I, I want to be back a part of it again. See, I'm going to tell you all something about being a Christian life. And living that Christian life, you can't be a sucker leaf. If you're a sucker leaf, the Bible will tell you about it. But I'm, I'm going to read something to you in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Let me read verse 22. And I'll, I'll be brought back to John in a minute. But let me, let me read this scripture right here. But the fruits of the Spirit. And I want you to ask yourself, do you have these things? But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And against them there is no law. See, nobody, if you, if you have these fruits of the Spirit, nobody can say nothing against you. Nobody can be mean to you because you're this type of person. And y'all know a lot of people who has the fruits of the Spirit in their life and you're sitting there thinking, oh, I love a person who loves somebody. I love to be around somebody that has joy. I love to be around somebody that's got all of these qualities and all these fruits of the Spirit. But it says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions of the lust. And if we live in the Spirit, we'll also walk in the Spirit. Y'all, what are you getting at about that, Brother Steve? I'm going to tell you something. If we're not careful, the next thing we know about our life, we'll find ourselves in here worshiping and praising the Lord. And the next thing we know, we'll feel like it, we're one of the, the suckers that gets pulled off. See, whenever Jesus was telling this, I want y'all to realize whenever Jesus was telling this, he wasn't talking about people losing their salvation. He was talking about people making sure that they bear the fruits that they're supposed to be bearing. And if we bear the fruits that we're supposed to be bearing, people are going to notice the fruit that we bear. People are going to know. You know, Chuck, I think about this. Ted, he's been sick for, for a few weeks. And the thing that I realized about, about Chuck is that he, he saw his friend was sick. And, and not only did he, he pray for him, but he told the whole church to pray for him. Not only did he do that, he said, not only did I do that, I'm going to take one of those letters that we write out and we're going to send those letters out. We're going to do more and more and more. The reason is because he says, I want to be one that has the fruits of the Spirit of God. I'm going back to, to, to chapter 15. I'm going back to verse 2, and I'm getting to that second part. Because listen to this. And every branch that beareth fruit is purged, and that it may bring forth more fruit. You know... I, I made a comment, I think, last week, week before last, I made a comment about, about whenever we lived at our other house, right outside our window, Carrie planted a, a crepe myrtle. And this bush, whenever we planted, it was about the size of this, about the size, you could have put it in that vase right there. You'd put that thing down, and, and we put it about that far away from the house, and we thought, that's plenty far enough. But I'm going to tell you something about this plant. This plant, you'd put it there, and next thing you know, it was this big around. It was hitting the house. Every time the wind would blow, it slapped the window. There was a lot of stuff that was going on with that plant that her husband had problem with. So one day, Carrie asked me, I'll never forget this. I was so smart, I thought. Uh, Carrie asked me, would you, would you trim some of my, my bushes? 
I said, oh, baby, I'd love to trim your bushes. I got the saw out. Oh, I was thinking, if I had my mind and my heart on that one bush, and I got there, and, I, and a lot of you men have done this before and probably found out how ignorant we were afterwards. So I went there, and I just started getting on that thing, and I got down there pretty low, and I just started whacking that thing off. I was so proud of myself. But I was willing to suffer the consequences whenever she got home because I was going to tell her, "Hun, you never told me what to do. So this big old bush, it was this big. When she got home, it wasn't even as big as this little old flyer arrangement there. I had took her down. If hey, And if I didn't think that it would get bad marital problems, I'd have took it down to dust. I'm telling you, I would have. This is what she told me when she got home. She got home, and I, I'd done all the other plants and everything, and I got it down, and she walked around to that one, and whenever she did, I kind of walked in front of her to let her see it kind of on her own. And whenever she got up there to it, this is what she said. She said, Steve, you cut that perfect. <laughs> it was, a, you remember... It was an accident, but she said, you cut that exactly the way that it was designed to be cut. Man, I took it down. I took it down to where it was little or nothing. But the next year when that came, y'all know what happened when the next year came? The next year came and boom, that thing was bigger than ever before. And I realized after that, you know, I don't want to do this no more because it was a lot of work to cut all that junk down year after year after year after year. And I realized that it, listen to this, the Lord God tells us all the time, He tells us, if you stay connected to me, He said, you're going to be alive. But if you at any time in your life to choose, I'm going to walk away from God. I don't want no part of you, God. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. You're going to dwindle away. You're going to lose. You're going to die. Jesus was telling his disciples, and I want y'all to think about this right here. He was telling all of his faithful disciples. He was telling all of his friends, all the people who's coming to him. He was telling even us today. Let me tell you what Jesus was telling us whenever he was telling about the vine and the branches. He was telling us, he was saying, you know something? I'm not deserting, y'all. I'll tell you what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, I want you to know something. I am going to die. I'm going to die for every one of your sins. He was saying, but I want y'all to know I'm going to come back again one of these days. And he says, not only am I going to die, he said, I'm going to tell you something. You'll never see me again physically. But man, that Spirit of God is going to keep right on growing in you. The question I ask you is the Spirit of God growing in you. If every one of us was a, was a plant like that crepe myrtle, let me share something with y'all. Whoa, would we grow? Would we sprout out? Would we do things for Christ? Would we really mean something? Listen to what the Bible says. I want y'all to see Romans 5, 6. It says, for when we were without strength. The, this is something I don't get. Y'all listen to me. Pay attention now. I do not understand when Christians get in hard times, them walking away from God. I don't, matter of fact, I don't understand when Christians get in hard time, them walking away from other Christians. I don't get it. And the reason I don't get it is because, let me share something, y'all. I draw strength from you. Matter of fact, whenever I was watching, watching Jimbo sing that song, and he says, if forever my soul would be lost. Listen, if it were not for Calvary, if it were not for Jesus Christ, my soul would forever be lost without him. So let me share something, y'all. Why would I ever walk away from somebody that would save my soul forever and ever and ever? And listen to this. I'm going to share something, y'all, again. There is so much joy in knowing that you're in the center of God's will that it's, oh, it's so pleasing to Him. And whenever we please God with being in the center of His will, it's something special. But I want you to know it says, but in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Not the righteous, He died for the ungodly. Not the rich, He died for the ungodly. Not for the people who are churchy, He died for the ungodly. The reason you can feel God's presence in your life is because God died for ungodly people. Maybe that's the reason I am so excited in God because I know what my life was like and I know that God died for me. 
Strength is important. I want y'all to know that, so you better stay connected to the Lord. Ephesians 6, 10 says this. He's talking to, he's talking to Christians people, so I'm going to talk to you Christian people. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And it says, put on that armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let me share something y'all about the devil. The devil's not playing. The devil's not playing. Just so y'all know, the devil knows his, he knows his, his, his future. The devil knows what's coming later on in his life. Did y'all know one of these days the Bible says that the devil is going to be chained down in hell? The devil is going to be in total torment. Did y'all know that one of these days that the devil is not going to be able to tempt you or test you or try you? The devil is not going to be able to, to give you fits as we call it. I'm going to tell you, one of these days the devil is going to be in total torment, but yet we're sitting here thinking that the devil right now is not going to throw the wiles at you all the time. See, I think about it a lot. Back years ago, me and Tyler, we got us a dartboard. We got us a dartboard, and, and, and we set that dartboard up. We got us some of those darts, and, and you know, and I thought, you know, I probably don't need this kid to be throwing a dart with one of those darts and Daddy walking up there. So I'd always, I'd always tell Tyler, now wait, I'll be right back. Wait, be right back. And I can just see him throwing, hitting me in the ball spot of my head whenever we're up there. He was a little fella, and we was throwing those darts all the time, throwing those darts. And you know the thing that I realized about throwing those darts is if we ever miss that board, it always put a mark where it hit. There was always a hole in that wall no matter what because, listen, we ended up getting good enough that we didn't make holes in the wall, but when we first started, we'd put those holes in the wall just like all of you would. Let me tell you something about the devil. Whenever he starts throwing those darts at you, he'll put holes in your heart. He'll put holes in your life. He'll put places in your life that if you're not careful, that you, if you don't fill them with Christ, every little hole, fill them with Christ. I'm going to tell you the good thing about the Lord Jesus Christ. He will fill you whenever you feel like nothing else in the world would, would ever fill you. So I won't tell you about this wiles of the devil. You better stay connected to Jesus because I'm going to tell you something. Without Christ in your life, there's total fear. I might have shared this with y'all before. I probably have, but I, I, I think about it. Any of y'all have nightmares? Any of y'all have nightmares? Let's be honest about it. So we see that, that, you know, a lot of times children have nightmares. And you know something, it gets to the point that, that when we grow up, then we as adults have nightmares. And those nightmares, even though we know that they're not real, they still scare us to death, don't they? Do y'all agree that, that a nightmare just scares you to death? Because that, that nightmare is something that you, that you look and you, and you see and you think, I can't wake up, I'm wanting to wake up. I, oh, it's a tragedy going on and I can't stop it. And those nightmares seem so real. And you know, I had nightmares all of my life. I remember, I remember running to my mom and daddy's bed and jumping up in there and just crying and screaming and hollering. And I, I don't mind telling y'all, it wasn't that I was wimpy. Man, I was terrified. And you know, and I really wasn't understanding what I was seeing and I wasn't, I wasn't understanding it. And, and you know, I remember whenever I got in, in, in school and, and people started describing the devil to me. If I, if I was to ask you about what the devil looks like and, and, and we ask all these little kids is up here, Frank, and we said, wait, hey, what's the devil look like? They're going to say that he's, he's red and they're going to say he has pointed ears and a big old long tail. No, 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 no. Devil, devil, uh, devil not red. Devils not, don't have pointy ears and a long tail and all that. Let me tell you what the devil is. The devil's no snake. The Bible was presented at back, in, back in the book of Genesis. He came up there and he, he slid around on his... But let me tell you something about the devil too. The devil is something that's beautiful too. The Bible says that he is an angel here on this, on this earth of light and he can come to you in so many forms. Let me tell you, men, why you struggle with, with how you look at other women. It's because the devil will put you in a bad situation. Women, let me tell you why you may end up not being content with who you have because the devil might put a little bit in your mind and in your thought and make you think about going the wrong way. Let me tell you, kids, whenever you look at that piece of gum and you think it's not going to hurt but take 
take just one piece of gum. It's because the devil will put it in there and it looks good in front of you. See, let me tell you something about the devil. The devil's not going to tempt you with anything that looks nasty or ugly or sorry or mean. He's going to tempt you with the best things he can. That's the reason that the Bible says that we have to be careful about the wiles of the devil because the devil will present to you some of the most beautiful things in this world and make you think you've got to have them whenever all you've got to have in your life is Jesus Christ. That old devil's a liar. He's going to, listen, the devil, listen, you don't have to go to hell. The devil does. He's going to go there. It is already sealed in God's word that the devil, listen, he's not going to turn. But I'm going to tell you, you can. You can turn. Oh, Brother Steve, there's not really any hope for me. Yes, there is hope for you. As long as you're able, on the count of three, deep breath, everybody. One, two, three. Y'all didn't do it. Y'all didn't do it. Do it again. On the count of three. One, two, three. There's still hope for you. Whenever you stop taking those deep breaths right there in your life, I'm going to tell you, there's no hope. If you don't have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life, there's no hope for you. Better stay close. I'm about to, I'm about to be over with. I'm about to be over with. I want, I want to read. Go back to the book of John, chapter, chapter 15, verse 3. Listen. Now you're clean. See, this is what my heart's saying. Oh, now you're clean. Now the Spirit of God has convicted your hearts that you need to fight that old devil. Listen to me. You better fight the old devil because the devil wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your wife, your children. He wants to destroy your job. He wants to destroy everything that's good in your life. The devil wants to destroy it. Do you know what I'd like to do? I, I look at old Walter. Walter, man, Walter's a big old... Oh, my buddy right there. I love you in the choir. Keep it up. Oh, if I was to get all these guys, get old Landon, get, get old Chris back there, I'll look at all y'all tough guys that stands up here, and you know I can imagine what if the old devil was to come here in physical form, and I was to say, hey guys, it's time to do some whipping right here. You follow me? This, that's how y'all might say, Brother Steve, that's so mean. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you, the Bible tells us to put on the army, armor of God so we can whip that devil. And I'm going to tell you something. I cannot whip the devil on my own, but through Jesus Christ my Lord, I can beat up and bruise and beat down that devil. Don't need y'all guys. Although I hope that y'all are as strong spiritually as you look like you are physically. I hope that you're putting on that armor of God. And I hope that your family are seeing you be the men and the women of God that you're supposed to be. The Bible says in, in John 15, 3, it says, Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Jesus, he wasn't letting them off the hook. He was saying, I done told you about that word. Now it's time for you to get clean. But listen, I'm, I'm about through. He said, If you abide in me and I abide in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abides in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. He said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Man, you look like one of them crepe myrtle trees. You bring forth so much fruit for Christ whenever you allow Jesus Christ to abide in you. He said, but if a man, pay attention. And then I looked, and then the work began. See, the work began after I cut down her vines and her bush out there. Oh, I would go and I'd grab a big old pile of that stuff, and, and I'd take it and I'd, I'd throw it away, and then I'd reach and I'd grab some more. Everywhere that I thought I was being smart, and cutting all that stuff down, then the work began. See, let me share something with y'all about your life. If you're, if you're chopped off from the vine, here comes the work. If a man abides not in me, he is therefore cast forth as branches and is withered. And listen, and men will gather them up and cast them in the fire and they will be burned. 
I could go on and on and on and on, but I'm not. Let me share something with you. If you're not connected to Jesus Christ, I'll tell you, you're going to be burning one of these days. Bro, Steve, that is so mean. No preachers nowadays preach about hell. I just got through doing it. If your heart is not right with Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I promise you, you will spend eternity in hell. Brother Steve, I'm a good person. You're not good enough. Brother Steve, I give. You can't give enough. Brother Steve, I am nice. You can't be nice enough. It is only through the blood of Jesus Christ that anyone on this planet gets to go to heaven. Everything else in this whole world will send you to hell. Do you know him? Sure choice. Sure choice. Lord, I come to you, God. It's every individual in here. It's their choice. It's their choice if they serve you. It's their choice if they love you. It's their choice if they, if they bring their children up to know you. It's their choice, God, of whether or not they're going to do right by, by, by their family and by their life. God, it is their choice about what they're doing in the name of Jesus this morning. God, I pray that you find us faithful this morning. God, save people's soul if they're lost. God, change people's life if they're wondering. God, I pray that they put on this armor of God so they could stand that old scheme and lies of the old devil. God, that's my prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we stand in